Everyone's told me I should have become a fashion stylist because there's a lot of competition, it's for girls, doesn't pay, but I still pursue it because this is who I am. This is all I know, I am fashion. everyone, it's Nessie Anderson here in Harlem with a brand new episode of The Pack Less Travel. Now today's guest is celebrity fashion stylist. <laughs> who? Who are we talking with today? <laughs> Jose Cordero. Now Jose is most known for being a fashion consultant at high-end retailers, serving clients such as J.Lo, Buster Rhymes, Nas, Bruno Mars, and as of late, if you are a Bravo Blood, Sweat, and Heels fan like I am, he's been serving it up fresh with Miss Micah Hughes as her personal stylist. Jose, I'm so happy to have you here. I'm so happy you came. I'm so excited. I'm, that was amazing. Thank you. We're actually, amazing. we're actually in his home. Can we just take a moment to appreciate this this moment uh, that he's given us? Okay, Pharrell has nothing on this man's hat. Woo. Okay, nothing. Call me Pharrell. <laughs> Yeah. So, talk to me about the opportunities that you created for yourself that led to your big break. Well, um, you know, I worked at Catherine Malandrino. It was my last day, and this woman walks in. This woman with bright colors, big lips, hair, um, and I had to walk up to her, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm that guy who's just like out there, outgoing. Um, so I had to ask her, who are you? Right. And it was, so, it so happened to be Daisy Llewellyn, queen of effortless year. Um, we exchanged numbers and whatnot, and um, she actually called me. She called me and she said, hey, um, one of my friends is looking for, you know, she needs an assistant. So I had told her that I was a stylist and I was leaving Catherine Melandrino to, you know, to pursue my styling. And she's like, oh, great, you know, this is what I do. And she, you know, she connected me with Micah. And I thought that Michael was male. I don't know why, right, but Micah, I thought Michael Micah Hughes, Micah Hughes right. from Blood, Sweat, and Heels. I thought that Micah Hughes was the male. So <laughs> I go and I, um, you know, we set up. We through text we met and whatever. So we set up um, a meeting. I go and I meet up with her, and I thought that she was a stylist. And I go to her house and she's like, uh, "You don't know what you're here for." And I'm like, "No." So she's like, "Okay, well." You know, um, this is what's happening. I'm gonna show. I need an assistant, but I also need a stylist. Um, you know, I've never thought of myself being anyone's assistant. My friends actually make fun of me because they've always said that I need an assistant. I'm that guy who needs an assistant. Really? Um, it, I believe it. it uh, yeah. <laughs> well, everyone says that. I don't know why, but they do. Um, so. You know, I was sitting there and she told me this and I was just like, wait, God put me here. So, you know, it's for a reason. So why not go for it? So I said, yes, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll try out for to be your assistant and Silas. And here I am. Wow. Like, You're in my house. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. That's, uh. that's amazing. So what would you say that you did as a stylist, up and coming mm -hmm. stylist, to deliberately brand yourself, right? There's so many other stylists out there what did you do to stand out i listen to my client i try to get to know my client before i actually dress them um i want to know who, who you're listening to where do you go to eat you know um just everything about you before i actually dress you i love it i i, I think that's a great way to build a relationship with your client but also to stand out because mm -hmm. i don't think that many people do i don't know of anybody that does that they try to be their friend yeah well. i mean because you need to have you know you need to build like a friendship with with the person that you're dressing right with anyone it's like right. you're working at a retail store you're working you know anywhere and you just you have to become friends with you know that person that you're always with right that's very true so what would you say is one thing about your journey that most people don't know? Hmm. One thing about my journey that most people don't know. Uh, huh. That's a good one, right? Good question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> about my journey. I mean, I've worked in retail for all, like forever. Um, 
And when I was in retail, all I would do is, you know, style, style people. At first, I first started off as doing like work, like visual merchandising, doing windows, um, dressing mannequins. That was my passion. It was dressing mannequins. I wanted to do windows. Um, a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that I can, I can also decorate home. You know, that's another passion of mine that a lot of people don't know. Oh, we're going to have to show some B-roll of this okay. living room because... Okay. Girl. Okay. Uh, <laughs> wow. So that you, you know, you're well-versed. You have a yeah. great background, not only in like clothing, but mm -hmm. just like in any kind of styling. Dance. I used to dance as well. I used to dance mambo. I used to... Once upon a time, I used to model, but I feel like everyone Yeah, let's in talk City, about that. Let's talk about that. I what? feel like everyone in New York City models. Okay. So I, I felt like I went through a phase that I wanted to be a model. Mm -hmm. um, everyone would tell me that I should be a model, that, you know, um, you have the look. You do. Go for it. Thank you. <laughs> Go for it. Um, but I feel like everyone in New York City wants to be a model. Right. You know, so you have to have a certain look and you have to have the, like people back, you know what I'm saying, like an agency, a mother agency right. who backs you up, um, who sends you to work and you know. Right. So being that you have such an extensive background in styling and like, you know, visual aesthetics, what would you say is one thing that you know now that you wish you knew when you first got into like the industry? Hmm. One thing that I now that I wish I knew back then. To be myself. To be myself. Because before I used to feel like I used to try to fit in. Right. You know, just to so people can like me, so people can want to hire me to dress them. You know, mm -hmm. and and now I'm just me. Right. Now I am Jose and everyone loves it. I, mean, oh. I love myself. I love myself with that. Q cool. Kendrick. Q I'm Kendrick. <laughs> so you know. I love it. I love it. And so you have had such a lot of success and a lot of people can look at that and think that you've had your whole life made, right? That everything no. has always been sunshine. No. Uh -uh. So talk to me about your last career low and what you did to recover from it. Because the message that we want to get out is that you are going to have lows in life, mm -hmm. but you can and you will bounce back from them. I was actually in a car accident where I lost my memory for a couple of days. Um, and it was hard for me to, you know, get out the hospital. I don't even remember getting out the hospital. Um, and I've been so independent all my life. And I had to, you know, not work for about eight months. Um, my mom had to, like, you know, basically provide for me. And that was very hard for me because I was very independent. So it was just like, you know, I wanted to work, but right. I couldn't work. I couldn't be on my feet for that long. Um, you know, I would get dizzy. Um, you know, so that, that that changed me a lot. It changed the way that I view things. Like now I'm just like a go-getter. Like, I mean, I was always the hustler. Like I was right. always like, I always had that mentality that I'm like, okay, I want to I want to become someone. I come from Washington Heights where, you know, a lot of the kids don't really do anything for themselves. And I'm like, no, I don't want that. Right. You know, I have a lot of family members, love you guys, <laughs> but that they're not doing anything with their lives. And I'm like, I don't want that. So I don't want that for myself. I right. want to be, you know, I want to be better. Um, so that, that you know, it, it just pushed, it, it pushed me to become the man who I want to be and, you know, I'm here. Wow. That's, a, that's, wow. Yeah. So do you uh, even remember the car accident itself? At all. Or how it happened? Mm -hmm. Wow. At all. My friends tell me that the reason they didn't even know, like, I was with my dog and, um, supposedly I had my car, um, my seatbelt, whatever, the car hit us from the side. I was with my dog and um, the car accident happened and I asked him like, what happened? And they're like, we just got into a car accident. And like, a couple of seconds later, I'm like, what happened? And they're like, we just got into a car accident. And another a couple of seconds later, I'm like, what happened? And they're like, we just got into a car accident. Yeah, like, why do you keep on you asking know? And then me? I asked him again, and, my, and my, one of my friends <laughs> said he started crying because that's when he realized that I wasn't, you know, that I wasn't there. Yeah. Um, and I don't remember that at wow. all. Wow. So that's very hard because it's like, you know, that happened to me. It's, it's very difficult to know that something happened to you and you had no control over that happening to you. And, and I can't remember. I tried for many months and, like, you know, I would stand in the corner of 
where it happened to try to like remember what happened and I still can't remember. Yeah. So it's very hard. It's still hard, but I'm pushing, you know, yeah. it made me a better person. I, I view things differently. Um, and I'm on my way to like the top. Yes, you definitely are on your way to the top. So talk to us about the most difficult part about being a stylist. Because mm. it looks very glamorous, but I know mm. that it's not all glitter. Mm -mm. Um, I would say that would have to be the fact that a lot of people want you to style them and they're like fans of yours and they're like, oh my God, your work is amazing, but they don't want to pay. Right. That, you know, they don't want to pay and it's like, they can pay, but they don't want to pay. So it's like, that's a difficult part because it's like, you, you want to dress these, these celebrities, but they don't want to pay. I mean, it would be good, great exposure, but right. you know, it they don't want to pay so it's like how do you deal with that with the fact that you want to do it but the money is not there so it's like okay I gotta pay my bills like you know right cut you know your phone bill doesn't wait your your rent doesn't wait like right. they don't care so talk to me a little bit more about the whole process of like pulling clothes for clients mm -hmm. how does that even work I mean, I feel like if, if you, you, it's all about the way that you look. I mean, I've seen other stylists where they go in like sweatpants and like, you know, a, a fitted and, you know, a t-shirt and they won't, they won't let them pull, you know, from a certain store. And, you know, then you have other people like myself <laughs> that, you know, go dress to the part that you, you have to look the part, you have to look good in order for you to, for people to believe you, for people to believe that that's what you're doing, you know, for people to want to lend you things um you have to fit the part you have to right. look, you know you have to look a certain way you have to be polished you can't just walk into a store and like yo what up like yo can i borrow some clothes you can't yeah. do that you know like you have to like walk in with respect looking good right and hey this is what i'm doing is either i'm pulling for an editorial i'm pulling for this celebrity i'm pulling for this red carpet you know you can't just just pop up like yo what up yeah you know our uh clothing store is more prone to giving you clothes depending on like what you're using it for so whether or not it's an editorial or it's for like an interview or a show how do they um, or is it all the same like, I mean for interviews it depends like it depends on what celebrity it is and who's interviewing who right what you know what what's the interview who you know what's the interview for right um I feel like for editorials, they always want to throw things at you. For reality TV, I feel like they always think, I, I mean, they've told me this before, I, I don't want to lend you stuff because I feel like, I don't know if the, if, you know, this, the reality TV star is going to like fight, right. they're going to rip my clothing, like, you know, so it's like, and, and if that happens and you have to pay them, the, the stylist, the, you know, they're the like, okay, you, you hold account, accountable for that. You right. Know, like, so. Interesting. Interesting. And lastly, just tell me about more on like how you go about requesting clothes. How do they verify if I'm a stylist or not? I can just go and say like, hey, I'm a stylist. Do, yeah. Is there any kind of like background check you have to show proof of anything or basically anybody can just go and pull clothes? I mean, not anybody can just go and pull clothes from stores. I feel like you have to build that relationship with, with the store, with the whoever the boss is, you know, whoever the, you know, I would say HR or, you know, whoever deals with that, PR. Um, you have to build a relationship with them and you have to, you know, there's times where I have a, a letter, cover letter, like, okay, this is what I'm pulling for, like, for such and such, for this shoot. A cover letter for the store. Yeah. To the to, store, to the say, store. Like, yeah, this is like, who I okay, am, this, this is, is what I'm doing. I, yeah, and I'm pulling for such and such celebrity. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's when they're like, okay, this is like legit, and like, you know, and they, I mean, they, they do call whoever is in that letter, mm -hmm. you know, like. I didn't even know what letter was involved, yeah, so that was, that's me, a good yeah. thing for you people that yeah, may not that, know. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like applying for a job, mm -hmm. you, you know. Yeah, most, I mean, for the most part, most, that's how it works. Like, you have to go in with like a, a letter that state, like, who are you pulling for? Like, what it's for? Like, what is it a shoot? Like, a magazine? So, how would you say you have used social media creatively to further your brand? I, I mean, I use myself a lot as my model. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I try to post as many pictures as I can of myself. You know, I pull from design up and coming designers mm -hmm. that want me to wear their clothing because mm -hmm. they like the 
the way that you know that I dress and all that. So that's how I use my, you know my branding myself, right? right. My self branding, right? Um, yeah. So, what would you say is one thing that you're still waiting for in regards to your career? Mm. Right? Like, what's like, what's that? You that know, what's the, what? What are you still waiting for to happen? You know, it, it's funny because I say this all the time to all my friends, and it, I don't know why it might not seem that big to anyone else, but to me, I want to dress for people. Wear a red carpet mm -hmm. the same night. Right. I, I want that. I don't know why, but that's always been my thing. Like I want to be able to say that. Okay, for that, you know, for the Golden Globes, like I dress for people. Right. And they all look amazing. Yeah. That's that's what I want. That's so for the magical number. I, I want that. I don't know why, but that's my thing. Yeah. I love it. Well, you know what? Let's go to social media. Uh. Because we posted a question out like how we usually do to see, you know, what the fans want to know, all that good stuff. Talk to me about your tattoo. So let's get a little, you know, roll the uh, sleeves up a bit here. I just got this. This was actually a gift from my little sister. Really? Um, yeah, she, you know, she just started going to college. She just started working. Uh -huh. And it was a week before my birthday. And... You know, I went with them to get a tattoo. Mm -hmm. They're twins. It's a boy and a girl. Okay. So I went with them to get their first tattoo. And out of nowhere, I was like, oh my God. So I've been wanting this one tattoo. And she's like, but I was like, I'm not sure about it. Right. And I showed it to her. And she's like, uh, you need to get a tattoo, you. Yeah. Um, I'm obsessed with my tattoo. It means, you know, it's it, I have six siblings. Okay. So... None of them are the same size, if you look at them. Mm -hmm. um, so I have seven. Each and one of them, some you know, it's for all my siblings and my mom. The middle one is for my mom. Okay. I have three siblings for my dad's side and three siblings for my mom's side. Okay. So. I love them. it. I have them. I live How long did that family. take? Oh my God, it was what? Six, seven hours? Wow. And I had to go again to get it done. Bad. Wow. It hurt. But you know, it really uh, is a representation of like who he is because he's all about family. We got to do with some B-roll of the family. You got the family here behind the scenes here for some moral support. Uh, like, hey. My mama. <laughs> mom just came. Mama. So we're definitely going to have to, um, you know, introduce you guys to the family uh, there. All right. Let's see what else. So let's talk about your facial hair. Now, this facial hair is like a new, it's a new thing, you uh -huh. know? The people that know you now know you to have like a mustache uh -huh. and or a beard. Uh -huh. And um, before there was a time where you had no hair, you would just go like clean face. Was that because that was that due to choice, or huh. was that because you just wasn't growing? You had it no was hair? no. I I well I don't really I mean. At that point, I really didn't grow hair, but it was also because of modeling. Right. I was told by a booker that I shouldn't have any facial hair on my face, so I can look younger, mm -hmm. um, and I can appear to you know every client. Right. So I did that. Yeah. Um, I mean, and it, and it also, it, I do believe that it does make me look younger. But, yeah. But I feel that when I grow my, you know, my full beard, mm -hmm. not that I grow a full beard, mm -hmm. but whenever I grow something, it, it, it you know, a lot of people. It, you know, they talk about it and they're like, oh my God, it's sexy on you. And I do yeah. believe that and I do feel sexy when I have like a scruffy look. Mm -hmm. um, and this, I have this, this is when like, you know, I want to feel like clean. Yeah. Like, it still have something on my face. Um, but for the most part, I do prefer my scruffy look. Right. And it's easy. I don't have to, you I know. prefer the scruffy look too, though. You, you do? You some edge, like, some yes. Edge? Okay. I was going to do the scruffy <laughs> look today, but I, my barber was like, Let me, let's just cut it. You think I have to be like, ah, let's mm -hmm. just take it off. So going off of that, let's talk about your personal style. Talk to me mm -hmm. about the hat, you know, because you're known for every picture, for almost hat. every picture yes. you have it's with my hat. is with a hat on or a turban or something. Yes. So I talk love to my me turban. about the hat and just like your personal style. Uh, I love my hats. It, it's gotten to the point that now I feel uncomfortable without a hat. I mean, I do have hair. I would take off my hat, but my hair looks crazy. Um, 
the people won't like it. Uh, but you know, it's just it's just a part of me now. I I just can't be without my hat. It sounds so weird. I know people would probably be like, okay, he's crazy, but I can't. And I also feel like I look sexy. I feel like you know, you know when you feel like you, when I, I don't know when you put on like a certain lipstick, yeah, and you just feel like you know I'm sexy. I'm, yeah. I'm that. Yeah, you know that. I don't want to yeah. say that. Word, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel. Like I'm feeling myself. Yeah. Feeling myself. Break out in song. Yes, that's how I feel when I wear a hat all the time. Um, and if I don't wear a hat, I usually wear frames. Um, but I lost my frame, so. Okay. Sucks. Um, <laughs> like teardrop, teardrop. Yeah. Your style is very. Um, it's very unique. So aside Thank from you. your hat, I am a fan of your shoes because they are. Like you have some sandals that you wear that are like kind of, um, they look like patent leather sandals and they're open toe. Then you have another like lace up shoe that is kind of like, um, look, I know your whole closet. That's uh, like, I'm like, I'm telling you, like, oh, remember you have this? I'm kind of thinking this. of soccer. <laughs> you, you know, you, 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 you have some good style. Uh. So has Thank it you. always been this way for you, or did, what did you have? To, did you have to go through anything to? I mean, it, I feel like I've always been fashionable. I mean, I remember being. I would I've always say, been flawless. I, no, no. <laughs> I, I've just always been into like you know. My mom kept me all the time dressing well. She would always buy me a new outfit like every weekend, you know. And back in the days, that wasn't you know that wasn't normal. And you yeah. know, growing up. From in Washington Heights, single parent, you know, it wasn't right. normal for that to happen. So I kind of grew up with that mentality. And um, I remember being what, like nine, eight years old, um, and I asked my mom to buy me. We went into Payless. Um, shoot, what do you Payless? Payless, yeah. yeah. Went into Payless, and I remember t asking my mom to buy me these cowboy boots. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's when I I. I feel like that's when I realized that I was like okay like this is what I like this is what I, I am all about fashion right you know because I remember going to school and not seeing any kid with cowboy boots but I was that one kid yeah. with cowboy boots and I would rock them like proud yeah and I just didn't care you, you set know? the trend I didn't care right people, you know people would tease me because of my cowboy boots but I didn't care because I love them right even my mom's friends would tease me really but I didn't care I love my cowboy boots wow so, in having such a strong sense of like self, what would you say your advice is to aspiring stylists? What are some tips and tricks that you think that they should know since you've been doing this for some time? Mm -hmm. Some mistakes or things that you don't want to you don't want them to have to go through. Learn your client. Listen to your client. Listen to everything that they're saying. Um, you know, just just listen to them. Um, be yourself. Um, always think, I would say, timeless. When you get a piece that is timeless, it's timeless. Yeah. Um, you know, just listen to your client. Your client. Have you had client. any bad experiences? I have. Uh, I have. I've had, you know, I've had, you know, every client is different. Mm -hmm. Every client is different. Sometimes you might bring something that the client might ask for, mm -hmm. but once you bring it to them, they've really changed their mind already, and yeah. you have to deal with that. With, you know with the fact that they've changed their mind but you also got to stay positive and like you know work it out with them like well okay well you might not like this but I can pull this for you right you know I can I can work it out like how about let's you know like encourage them to try it on because I always say that you you can never you can see a dress and say that it's the most ugliest dress or say that it's the most beautiful dress right and once you put it on it might you know you it might change right you know um, what how do you go about telling someone that maybe that outfit that they want to wear is not the best look for them? I because uh, it's like a fine I, line, uh -huh. right? You're, you're, you're there to please, mm -hmm. but it's like it's that, hard. Yeah, it's hard. But I always encourage my client. You know, okay, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I, hear what you're saying. <laughs> I hear it what you're saying, but. You know, how about you just try this on just to see, even though that you don't like it, but let's just see, because you know, you never know. Yeah. You never know, you know, let's just change this belt. Let's just add, you know, a necklace. Let's just, you know, some earrings. Let's just change the shoes. Right. You know. It's always difficult. You have some people that, you know, 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, you do. So talk to me a little bit about you know what we can look forward from what we can look forward to from you in the future. Any products that you're working on, or just like areas that you would like to experiment in. I I mean I want to get um my website is coming soon. So stay tuned, people. Um, I'm working on that. I'm working on editorials. I want to shoot a lot of editorials. That's something that before I didn't think it was necessary, but now I do think so. I think that a website, you know, and some editorials, it helps a lot for your client to see what you're all about. Right. Because it's not all about you dressing a celebrity. Right. You know, because a celebrity, again, a celebrity might be, you know, they might want you to dress them a certain way, and you have to cater to that you know, client, because that's your client and they're paying you. Right. So basically, just, you know, cater to your client. Yeah. Listen. Always listen. But also know how to gently say. Let's try this. <laughs> let's, let's, that's going to be let, my let, new let, thing. That's going to be my yeah, new thing. Let's, you have to. Let's try this. I, I hear you, but let's try this. That so, always works and it doesn't offend them. I'm going to use that. some clients do get offended, you know, when you tell them that. I never tell a client, I've never done that and I would never do that. Yeah. Because I've heard, you know, other, I know other stylists that they've dealt with stuff like that and I'm just like, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. So, you, again, you have to listen to your client, you have to become their friend. In order for you to dress someone, you have to know entirely who they are. Right. You know, just so you can get a vibe of their style. Let's try this is like ingrained into like my memory. I'm gonna use that the whole week. That's like my new phrase. Like, let's try this. I want to eat here. Let's, let's try, try this. this. Of course, just smile. <laughs> yes, okay, smile. Let's try this. <laughs> yeah. So, um, tell everyone where they can follow you and keep up with you. In the meantime, while you're working on your website, what are your like your social media handles uh, and all that good stuff? Mr. Jose Cordero, M R J O S E C O R. D E R O. Instagram, Twitter, that is that. No Facebook. I do Personal have Facebook. Facebook. I do have Facebook, but you know, I just got Facebook like what, like two, three months ago, so I don't know how to work it. Um, yeah, I was the only guy, and I didn't believe it. Wait, but what, what, like, what, what, what? What's what, the story behind that? What made me get Facebook? What made you? Why didn't you? Why are you just getting Facebook I, three I just, months ago? You know, I was. I've always been at married. the end of 2014. Oh my God, yes. Okay. I've just been very private about my life, just about everything. I mean, again, I do have Instagram and I do have Twitter. Yeah. But I write whatever I want. And I just feel like in, on Facebook, everyone finds you, you, you know. I just, my family knows everything about me now yeah. because of Facebook. And now I like that because, you know, now they're seeing that, okay, like, you know, he's being successful. He's, you know, he, he's becoming who he wants to be. Do you think that Facebook is more judgmental than the other platforms or? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Hands down, I think so. That's true. At least for me. And I it's, don't know. It's, it's, hard, it's easier to sneak around and spy on people on Facebook than it is oh on God, Instagram. Because yes, yeah. you know, you scroll on yeah. somebody's page and you accidentally yeah. double tap their picture. It's like, oh, I know you've been spying on me. Yeah, it. Uh, I I still don't like Facebook. You think I? I'm see. thinking about deleting it, but. Oh God! See, he don't. Instagram and Twitter. Instagram and Twitter. M R J O S E Cordero C O R D E R O. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow, follow him. Me. Follow my journey. Please. Follow his journey. I'm still, you know, I'm still trying to become the man that I want to be. I know the man that I want to be. But I'm, I'm working on becoming that man. So please follow me. I love it. And it's a journey worth watching and a journey worth following. On behalf of everyone on the other side of that screen, I just want to thank you for having the courage to make your passion your career. Oh my God, thank you for coming Woo! and listening to my story. <laughs> no problem. Now, if you guys enjoyed that interview as much as I did, I need you to let me know it, okay? I need you to like, I need you to comment, I need you to subscribe, I need you to share to all of your social platforms. Follow me. Even That's what Facebook. We need you to do. <laughs> yes. And yes. And if you like this jacket, he's like, if you like this, please follow me so you can know the designer, the up and coming designer. He's amazing. So make I'm sure you up, follow I'm at Mr. Jose Cadero so that you can get all the all details, the details on not only this outfit, but his outfits in the future, yesterday, tomorrow, yes, the day after. Please. And like I said, make sure, if you like this video, you make sure you let me know. You enjoyed this interview, I need you to like. 
I need you to comment, I need you to subscribe, I need you to share on all of your social media platforms. Oh. Oh. Even Facebook. Uh, Until even next Facebook. time. Yes, you better. <laughs> Please. Thanks for watching.